So we are going through uh, Donovan and Koenig Han, the Go Programming Language book. We are in chapter two. And I really like this book because it's um, very precise. And uh, trying to remember, Koenig Han, if you look at like, if you go to Amazon and you look at Koenig Han, I don't know how to say his name. Anybody know how to say his name? Kernighan, but you have, you know, C programming language. This is a seminal book in computer science, 1988. And, uh, and then you have the Unix programming environment, Kernighan and Rob Pike. And, um, and I thought there was another Rob Pike and Kernighan. Practice of programming, Kernighan and Rob Pike. And so Rob Pike can... Thompson and Robert Gressimer were all the creators of the Go programming language. And then Kernighan and Pike, Rob Pike, are friends. They've written books together. And so, you know, Rob created, Rob Pike created the Go programming language. And then his friend, along with Donovan, uh, created uh, this book. So I think it's a good book to pay attention to. If you want, that's one of the reasons. And I love this first paragraph in the book, so we're just going to break this up here and look at the book, but if you all have your book in front of you, in Go, as in any other programming language, one builds large programs from a small set of basic constructs. Variables store values. Simple expressions are combined into larger ones with operations like addition and subtraction. Basic types are collected into aggregates, like arrays and structs. Expressions are used in statements whose execution order is determined by control flow statements like if and for. Statements are grouped into functions for isolation and reuse. Functions are gathered into source files and packages. And so I highlighted those key words there because that's kind of like structured programming, uh, you know, modularized programming, breaking things down. And so I just really like that paragraph. Uh, the next thing that stood out to me in chapter two was case matters. So, you know, heap sort with lowercase h is different than heap sort with an uppercase h. And then Go has 25 keywords. And uh, if you look at the Golang spec, you could see those keywords. Go length spec. And so we have uh, keywords. And so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. There's 26 now by that count. And in this, this one, there was 25. Break case, Chan, constant, continue, default, defer, else, fall through, for, func, go, go to, if, import, interface, map, package, range, return, select, struct, switch, type, var. Well, maybe I counted wrong, but the same as in the book still. But a lot of that stuff, you know, uh, we, we, uh, we have kind of taken a glance at in chapter one already or in the first part of this course. Um, next thing on page 28, if an entity is declared within a function, so that middle paragraph there, so if an entity is declared within a function, it is local to that function, so it's talking about scope here. If declared outside of a function, however, it is visible in all files of the package to which it belongs. So if you declare something outside in a, in a function, so just looking at scope, and we'll just create a file here to kind of, you know, play out some of these things. 0, 57, and going through book. And then create a main.go, and package main, and func main. And so if I have a function func foo, and I have uh, x colon equal 
42, and then x plus plus, and then x, I don't know, is equal to 19 times x times 19. So I could just do x times equals, if I could get the equal sign, uh, 2. We'll multiply it by 2. And then, um, you know, we could return x, return an int. And so x, the scope of x is from here to there. And if we had, you know, bar y equals 99, the scope of y is going to be on all files of package main. And then we could font dot print line y. And we could call foo and assign it to n. And then we could font dot print line n. And then we could run that. What number are we on? So. All right, 99 and 86. So, uh, you know, it's just talking about scope. If an entity is declared within a function, it is local to that function. If declared outside of a function, however, it is visible in all files of the package to which it belongs. So if I wanted to create another file here, and I say that this is package main, and I have func bar, and we're going to do uh, i is colon equal y plus plus, and then we return that, and it returns an int. I guess we just return y plus plus. There we go. And it's telling me that this is uh, not working. Expected semicolon found plus plus. Return y plus plus, y is equal to that. Do I need the same package, package main, func bar. I thought it would be uh, um, all files in that package would have access to y. So maybe that's uh, file, file scope, not package scope. Let me just play with this for one second. n is e colon equal to y, n plus plus. n equals n plus 1. Return n, n plus plus. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not liking n plus plus. What's my error say? Expected semicolon, found plus plus. So I think that's just a problem with uh, LSP. LSP's like something to do with. So I'm just going to take that out and see if it runs. And so now if I'm in 57, I could go run star.go to run all the files. Um, expected plus plus at end of, unexpected plus plus at end of statement. Return int, return n plus plus. Anybody see what I'm doing wrong? Oh, I need to call bar. And bar returns another int. And func dot print line bar. Let's see if that runs. All right, that runs. So it took 99 and added one to it. Y is available on all of the files of package main. So it's got package level scope. I'm not sure why returned n plus plus doesn't work. Anyhow, if an entity is declared within a function, it is a local. It is local to that function. If declared outside of a function, however, it is visible on all files of the package to which it belongs. The case of the first letter of a name determines its visibility across package boundaries. And so, case we already talked about that. If that's uppercase, 
It's available, it's visible outside of a package, right? You remember that? Anybody need to see that again? No? Um, I need my glasses. Where they set them? So we have exported. So we talk about it as exported or not exported or visible or not visible outside of a package. Package names themselves are always in lowercase. There is no limit on name length, but convention and style and Go programs lean towards short names, especially for local variables with small scopes. Generally, the larger the scope of a name, the longer and more meaningful it should be. And then camel case. So short names, right? I'm using X. I'm using Y. But if this was going to persist across many files, I would have names which were more like this. So if I look at the variables, you know, that's uh, being declared at the um, package level. So it's available across all files. And uh, See if we could find that. Files. I don't know where it'd be in there, but all right. And then uh, bottom of 28 declarations, we have four major kinds of declarations. The var for creating a variable. We could do a constant, constant z equal 100. And look at the type of that. So it's an int constant. I don't know. We'll make it 999. So it's different. We could also declare the type of that constant we want. We have a type, so we could create our own types. We've seen this, right? So we've got var, we've got constant, we've got type. And then we also have the func. So those are the four major kinds of declarations. Var, constant, type, func. So that's there at the bottom of page 28. A Go program is stored in one or more files whose names end in Go. Each file begins with a package declaration that says what package the file is part of. So here we've done package main. But if I wanted to add to that, I could do, I don't know, goofy. And I could create a file in there and I could call it package. So I could just call that main if I wanted. And this could be package goofy. And I could have func moo. That needs to be exported, so it's got to be capital. And that returns a string. And then we're going to return, this is from package goofy, okay, and save that. And supported function should have a comment, moo is for examples sake. And, uh, and then over here I could come to my imports and I could import, I don't, let's see if it corrects it for me, import and this is uh, github.com goes to 11 and it's um, wow CIT 90 fall 2019 and then 057 going through book and then it's uh, goofy and then down here I could call goofy.moo and that's going to return a string. And I can front dot print line that string.
This is from package Goofy. All right, so we, this is how we can start organizing our code, put things into packages, different packages, import those packages, and then the Go mod is uh, allows it to be tracked. And so to get Go mod at your root, if I come up a level, I can see Go mod there. So I do go mod init, and that initializes a go mod to track at the root of your project. And you have to pass in, you know, some github.com, you know, goes to 11, some namespace. So you do the go mod init, and then go mod and go some file gets created. And they, um, they allow you to start, you know, doing this namespace. It's a new way to go mod. We went over go mod, didn't we? Slightly? Yeah, instead of go path. Yeah. So the first uh, little code example that comes up in chapter two is uh, Open recents right here. So we have chapter two and we have boiling. And so it's a constant boiling to uh, set that to 212. And then we say this is Fahrenheit var C. So the scope of F, sorry, var F, scope of F is from here down. Scope of C is from here down. Scope of boiling, constant boiling F, is all the files in package main. And by the way, having documentation above your package to explain your program is a good thing to do. And if you have a lot of documentation, put it into a file doc.go, which all it does is have a comment and then package main underneath the comment, and that's all that's in that one file. So if I wanted to, right here, I can create doc.go, and inside doc.go, I could just have the package declaration and the comments for the package, and that's it, all right? So that's where my documentation is for the package. It's right there. That's the convention. And then um, we do Fahrenheit minus 32 times five divided by nine, and boiling point percent G interesting character F or percent G interesting character C a new line so that will print it out in Fahrenheit or Celsius and output is boiling point 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. The constant boiling F is a package level declaration so we just went over that, I'm just reading my highlights here in the book. Variables f and c are local to the function main. Execution of the function begins with the first statement, continues until it counts or encounters a return statement, or reaches the end of the function that has no results control, and any results are then returned to the caller. And then the next program that we have is f2c, this one. So uh, F2C, I like just getting rid of this stuff. There's like a little too much there to look at. <coughs> CD, and then CD into chapter two, and F2C, go run main. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 0 degrees Celsius. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. So 
So we have constants freezing F, boiling F, 32 and 212. So these get assigned here to there, here to there. So what are they respectively, right? Assigned respectively. And then we have uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius passing a float 64. And since we have dot zero here, it turns them into floats. So we could see those types if we wanted. Does anybody remember print F? What's the command to see the type? It's percent T backslash N. And we could see the type of, uh, we could do a tab and then there percent T and then backslash. And we could see freezing F and we could see uh, boiling F, the types of each of those. And this one is, um, oh, are we already in FC? Yes, we are. This one is uh, float 64 and float 64. So adding those little zeros, it makes us float 64. And so then we pass in float 64, and we take that, minus 32, multiply by 5, divide by 9, and we get that, and it converts it to Celsius. And so that gives us 32 Fahrenheit, 0 Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. Um, I like that. Percent G, percent G. If we go look at Godoc forward slash font, we see find percent G, uh, E for large exponents, percent F, decimal point, but no exponent. So that's the next one, F2C. And then it talks about variables. And a zero value and short variable declarations. Anybody have questions about that? And short variable declarations are used to declare and initialize the majority of local variables. And var is when you want an explicit type that differs from that of the initializer expression. Or for when the variable will be assigned a value later and its initial value is unimportant. Um, so like an explicit type that would be different from the initializer expression. So just an example of that would be like var um, z would be a float 64 and it's equal to 100, right? So normally this would be seen as an int, but here I could make it a float 64 because I'm specifying the type. Front line Z. And also uh, percent capital T. Float sixty four. And if I didn't have that float sixty four. Int, right? And then it talks about pointers and uh, there's uh, some and just to review pointers, and to do that, let's go back to our, and let's stop this video, and we'll call this part one.